Hey, 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 welcome back to the channel. This awesome vase will be the last project I complete in the old workshop and rest of the projects will be finished and fully completed in the new workshop. As I said in previous videos, I still have a few footages mainly for preparation for projects which was filmed in the old workshop and will be finished in the new one. But I'm super excited to share some footages how I getting on with uh, building the new workshop, but that will come later in the video. Back to this week project, mixing up some depot resin in order to cast some pine cones into epoxy resin. So I wanted to experience with different colors, so I'm using some chameleon uh, pigments. However, when I tried to put a little bit of a copper, I went a little bit heavy handed and it kind of ruins my initial plan. So it will be more a copper looking project. And this is one of my equipment which tend to stay out of uh, filming. However, I thought this time I will include the footage how I um, use a vacuum pump for my resin casting and the principle you put the resin into a chamber which then sucks all the air out therefore all the bubbles out from your resin so you will end up at the end with a nice clear resin without any bubbles and this method is super beneficial when you cast for example pine cones which has a lot of encapsulations um, due to the structure of the pine cones so having a nice clear air bubble free resin will just support um, throughout the casting you less likely will end up with any any pockets or any air bubbles potentially within the resin and just in case i also put this in my pressure pot just to ensure it will be a nice result and this flower pot works really well for molds as you can see popped out very nicely and already gives a very good shape for this vase and just keep an eye on those little three dots at the bottom of the vase because it will be important at a later stage but i will cover that soon and using my trusted five minutes epoxy resin to glue the blank onto a waste block and then it's ready to go on the light. I didn't even try to remove the the insert from the inner core. I knew that would not come out just because it was the way that that insert kind of worked. Uh, I knew that no chance it would come out. So I left it there and I will turn along with the buzz. I was experiencing a lot of vibration here and I will show you in a second as well what exactly I mean and how you can acknowledge if you have vibration and it mainly results because of the size of the blank, the amount of resin and then also the length of the, the, the project and obviously it's only just glued to a waste block. So I then provided some additional support from the tailstock and you can see on this picture where you have those sort of dotted lines, you know, if I describe this well, uh, that means you have some sort of vibration. And here, after the support from the tailstock, I'm just shaving off a little material and you can see how nice and smooth surface we have compared to the one on the right hand side still have the dotted line from the vibration. So if you get those little marks, then you know your project is not completely um, secure on the lathes and you need to put some additional support. 
Once you have a nice true surface and the cutting edge cuts the resin nicely, it generates a lot of heat. And to demonstrate, I use my thermometer to give you some sort of idea and it gets up to 52, 53 uh, Celsius, which is about 127 Fahrenheit. And when it comes to steel, heat obviously doesn't really support the cutting edge to retain very long. So I used to swap over to a different tool or just take a little break to cool down the cutting edge and then I can go back to do some more turning. And obviously it's also not a very pleasant feeling um, as you hold the tool, it's kind of burning your finger. So just be careful. Filming how I hollow the inside of any project, not normally the the most fun part of the projects. So let me show you a little sneak peek how my new workshop is coming along. So check this out. All machineries and tools safely made to the new workshop with some additional lighting put up in a ceiling, some workbenches already in place. And as you can see in the far right corner, I'm building a insulated epoxy room and the lights already in place, ready for turning. And actually, next week's project video was already finished in the new workshop, but started in the old one. And I need your help. I want to name the Epoch Serum so it has some, some good creative name. So please shout out down below in the comments. I'm thinking something up to no more than three words, something where resin or epoxy is also involved. So if you have any ideas, please let me know. Once we have the winner, I will then make a wooden and resin plug, which then go up above the door. But coming back to our piece, the hollowing is all done and I finished with some negative rake scraper and doing a little bit of ascending. I sent it all the way up to 600 because my plan was to finish this piece with some gloss spray lacquer. Here the piece all sanded up and I forgot to film when I actually cleaned it but I used some, some alcohol to clean down all the residues and dust from sanding and then I went ahead and applied a couple of coat of uh, clear gross lacquer. This is always a nerve-wracking moment when you're parting off the piece. I like to just score a little bit and then finish up with the hand saw so I can keep hold with one of my hand the piece so it definitely doesn't come off as you parting the piece off from your lathe. And as I mentioned at the beginning, the three little dots at the bottom, unfortunately, I did some miscalculation and they and they showed up at the bottom and unfortunately it wasn't much I could have done at this stage so this is kind of part of the design now. Hope you enjoyed this week's project video, see you back next week.